Hello students, uh, once again you're welcome to Western University. Uh, today we want to look at quickly, briefly, we want to look at uh, chapter 9. Uh, chapter 9 is made up of nine, 10 different parts and the title of uh, chapter 9 is Routy Protocol. Okay, Routy Protocols. So without much ado, let's begin. Let's uh, take a look at what we expected to see in chapter 9. In chapter 9 we'll be doing what we call the introductory part introduction okay after that we look at the static the static routing protocol uh, then after the static routing protocol we take a look at the dynamic routing protocol remember the dynamic routing protocol is divided into two types or two forms one is the distance vector protocol and the other one is the link state uh, protocol so after in section three we'll be looking at dynamic with the general overview of dynamic uh, routing protocols and then in uh, uh, part four of this work, we look at the, the distance vector protocol itself, which is a type of dynamic routing protocol. So we look at this vividly. Then in uh, part five of this, we will look configure learning the, how to configure the ROI pipe, ROI IP, which is the routing Ethernet protocol. We we'll learn the routing Ethernet protocol and the version two of the routing Ethernet protocol. So after that, we will look at the 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 link state which is the second type of the dynamic routing protocol we look at the link state which is the second type of uh, 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 dynamic uh, routing protocol then after after that we will look at how to configure the opu shortest path first routing protocol which is the ospf opu shortest path first routing protocol we, that will be in our section seven of this chapter and then after that we look at uh, advanced distance vector routing protocol in the advanced you know we've studied distance vector routing protocol in uh, part four okay in part eight we look at the advanced distance vector routing protocol routing protocol the ad these advanced distance uh, uh, distance vector routing protocol include what we call the enhanced interior gateway routing protocol. So we learn how to configure the enhanced interior gateway routing protocol. Is that okay? So we learn the enhanced interior gateway Interior routing with border gateway routing protocol. Then in section 10, we will look at the IP version 6 routing uh, protocols. Okay, so here are the objectives of uh, the, the whole entire chapter. We should be able to learn to uh, find the difference between what we call static and dynamic routing protocols. We should know the difference in this chapter, at the end of this chapter as the students of uh, ne network, computer networking or essential networking management, we should be able to know the difference between static and dynamic routing protocols. That's the first and foremost objective. Then the next is to be able to describe or find the difference between the distance vector and the leak state protocol. You know, these are dynamic uh, protocols, routing protocols. So all the, the first one is uh, knowing the general meaning and differences between static routing protocol and dynamic routing protocol. Then the second objective, what we need to learn is if we now pick this dynamic routing protocol, we should be able to know the difference between the two types of dynamic routing protocols, which are, which are the distance vector routing protocol and the link state protocol, routing protocols, okay? Then the third objective is to be able to configure, learn how to configure, to set up a uh, routes uh, protocols for both the static and the, the route internet protocol. So we should be able to know how to configure, uh, carry out basic setup configurations for static routing protocols and RIP protocols. Then another objective we need to learn in this chapter, something we need to go home with after doing this course is also to understand the relative amount of traffic generated by each protocol. So every protocol has its ups and downs, has its advantages and disadvantages, has its merit and demerit. So we should be able to know 
what are the traffic, the kind of traffic that generated with any of these protocols that we decided to use so that we know whether we should go for it or use another routing protocol for our networks. Now, the, the first part of this chapter is the introduction, right? This is section one. So we've looked at the objective of the course. Now is to look at the introductory part of the, the course. Now in the introduction, this chapter introduces the basic uh, things that you need to know, the basic things that you need to know about routing, about routing protocols that, that routers use. You know, protocols are the, like the language or the commands that the routers use to forward our data packets from one geographical location to another geographical locations. So the first thing you need to know is to understand, have a grip, a grab of what this whole chapter is talking about, routing protocols. That it tells you, uh, it gives you the basic concept. So in the introductory part, we should have a basic concept of how data are being routed using protocol, using this kind of commands. Now, we also said that the routing protocols actually give a standardized format for uh, for how we manage uh, how we manage our data packets, uh, data packet headers, how we manage them, and how we send them from one location, from one computer to another computer. So we should, at the end of this uh, chapter, which is about routing protocols, we should be able to have a, a standardized format, understand the standardized format for route management, how, uh, for example, how computers select which routes they, they go to send a data packet to which route uh, among the many routes, which route are they going to select among the many routes wherein they will send a data packet through. So route, sel route selection is very important in, uh, in uh, routing protocols. So in this chapter, route selection is one of the things. Then not only route selection, then uh, another thing that they need to, we need to understand is that why computers have to share their route status with their neighbor routers. Why router or uh, routers spe specifically, or any routing device, the, any layer three device, which which is, which can act on behalf of routers, any layer three device, like uh, specifically, but specifically routers, why they have to share their routing status with their neighbors, their neighbor routers. Why? Why? Because they have to. So first of all, route selection is important. This is one uh, uh, one uh, segment of uh, route management. So in route management engineering, in route management engineering, uh, routers should be able to select the first of all the route for data packet, the route, the, the destination or the path that the particular data packet should uh, travel through or should go through to reach its uh, destination. So that's the first the route selection. That's the first aspect of it, what they do in managing in managing the routing protocols. So route selection. The second one is that why routers, routers also share their route uh, status with their neighbor routers. And then the third one is calculating the alternative route. If the best part of the route is down, for example, another thing router does or routing protocol helps to do is that you should be able to calculate the best part, alternative part, where the data packet can go through to reach the destination if the original routing uh, path is down, if the, that gateway or that particular uh, routing journey or uh, that the data packet is supposed to follow, if it's down, then the, uh, the routing protocols or the routers should be able to calculate the best alternative uh, path, the best alternative path that the data packet has to go through in order to reach the destination. So these are very significant. They are very, very, very significant, uh, Johnny. So there are three things about route management. One is the uh, route selection. The second one is why routers have to share their route uh, status with their neighbor routers. And the third one is to calculate the best route path if the to be alternative uh, route, if the route, the best route path is, is down. So these three things are route management uh, cons consign that we should be able to understand in this first introductory part of this uh, work. Then also we, we, the, the need for this chapter, uh, to the focus of the chapter is on the use of routing protocols 
in the in the in campus network environment. So the focus, the 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 need, the 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 core point of the whole work we'll be describing the entire chapter is uh, focusing on the, the campus network environment okay so the routing of data in campus network so that's uh, what we are looking at then again if you move further in the first part we will introduce what we call the static routing protocols and but we will do that in the second part of our lecture we start to treat the static routing protocols the mini the configuration the route design and so on and so forth so we look at that in the second part of our lecture. Now, uh, th this section, that part of uh, static routing, include example how to configure what the things we're going to learn, which I, I, already, I already mentioned, how to configure the static route, and also the view the route in the routing table. So how we can view the particular route, looking up the routing table. So these are the, the basic things we will do in the section two. We learn how to configure the static routes and also view the routes path in the routing table. Okay, now the we also look at a discussion when and where the static protocols are used. When should you use it and where should you use a static protocol in part two? So we look at uh, not only the meaning of routing uh, static pro protocol route or static static routing protocol, we also said we look at the the view of the route in the routing table and then we also say another thing is that we should learn when we should use the static route and where we can use the static route protocols when we should use it when last time what time when and where where should we design a static route okay which type of capons network we should bring in a static routing concept okay so when and where the static routing protocols are used and also when and why so not only when and where why are you using the static routes what advantage does it have over the dynamic routing protocol so why do you want to use a static routing protocol when we have a dynamic routing protocol routing protocol so the why why we are using it has to do with the advantages because anytime you have to use it maybe the advantage is strong the benefit is strong for that particular segment of the network okay so we should know when we are using the, the and why we are using the, the the static routing protocol okay so and then also the part of the two we will look at se section two we look at and over in section three in section three we will now move to what we call the concept of dynamic routing protocols dynamic routing protocol so we will learn that in the section three of this work dynamic routing protocol like we said on earlier on they're divided into distant vector and the leak state routing protocol so dynamic routing protocol dynamic routing protocols they are divided into distant vector routing protocols and leak state routing protocol so we learn all of this in section three of this work then in section four we learn something new we will come into the distance vector protocol itself not just the that is a type of dynamic routing protocol but we will treat it as a as a section as a chapter a sub chapter okay we we'll study the distance the distance uh, vector routing protocol then after that we move to section five in section five we're going to learn the step for configuring how to configure roip version two okay the routing protocol this are uh, routing internet protocol we're going to learn the version two how to configure the configuration okay the configuration into router to make router to be able to route and send said data packet with this uh, routing protocol so that we learn in chapter five in section five of this chapter then uh, again in uh, section six and seven we're going to look at co how to configure how to configure the ospf which is the open shortest path first routing protocol so this is the configuration of ospf this is what we're going to learn here okay this is what we're going to learn here then after that we we'll look at the enhanced interior gateway routing protocol this eigroh enhanced interior gateway routing protocols so this one we learn it's actually an advanced uh, advanced uh, distant vector routing protocol this one is an advanced distant vector routing protocol 
So it's an enhanced one. So we're going to learn this in uh, section 8. We're going to learn everything about the configuration, the meaning, the configuration, the setup, and uh, why it's being used, the advantage, and so on and so forth in section 8 of this uh, chapter. Then we, after that, we look at the BG, the BGP routing protocol, the border gateway, border gateway protocol. So we're going to look at this under the leak state, under the leak state, okay? So we look at the meaning, the configuration, and so on and so forth. And then the, uh, the, the last part, which is uh, section 10 of this chapter, we look at the IP version 6 routing protocol. Okay, the IP version 6 routing protocol, the meaning, the configuration, the style, the manner, the advantages, why we're using it. So all of this we go to like itemize in the chapter 10. Okay, so just a quick one, and uh, this uh, you network essential management, you can get the textbook, and the textbook comes with uh, networking challenge CD-ROM. So it comes with networking challenge CD-ROM. So you can do network system with simulations, okay, just for a practice for the students, okay. Networking challenge you have here is uh, uh, included in this networking challenge CD-ROM. So if you buy the book, the textbook, you can actually try the protocols that or the configuration style that we've given in this text or in this lecture and try them out so that you have a hang of it. The challenge, they provide you with the opportunity to configure a virtual router. Okay, you don't really need to buy a router, but you have a virtual router, okay? Like a simulated one, okay? So you can try the static way after the lecture, after this chapter, Try the RIP version 2, try to configure it using a virtual router. Try the USPF using a virtual router. And also try the EIGROP routing protocol using a virtual router. Okay? So at the end of the day, you'll be, if you're able to do this using a virtual router, you'll be on top of the game when it comes to computer networking and the routing protocols that are designated with routers in network systems. Thank you very much for joining us in this section.